All right, all right, all right. What is up, Sam Bone Nation? Happy Thursday, folks. February 13th, 14th, February 15th, 2024. I was trying to think, how should I label this episode? The 102nd episode of the Sam Boner Show. Look, I'll be honest with you, folks. <laughs> 102 episodes. Uh, this feels like my second fucking try. Look, at the end of the day, you guys know it by now. I'm just a Sam Boner. I'm no media professional. Just telling it how it is, chopping it up day by day, making the best of life. And that's what Sam Boners is all about. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Happy chick gig cutlet but like yeah here's an idea right here's an idea let's roll out wing month in january and chicken cutlet month in february right as we try to rope in our new year's resolutions and start to gear up for another summer for the ages wing month cutlet month let's throw in cheesesteaks after this maybe some hot dogs some pizza like that's right we are making the world fat. Munching, munching. We are the Sam Boners. Munching, munching. But that's all right. That's either here or there. We're out here. We're grinding. It's a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful time to be a Sam Boner. Appreciate everybody tuning in to another episode of the Sam Boner Show. I'll tell you what. Look, at least the sun is shining, right? I was trying to label this episode, and uh, you know, by the end of it, maybe I'll change the name. But you know, the only thing I can think of right now is now what? At the end of the day, is now what? Because honestly, I firmly believe that these next six weeks are the toughest six weeks in the entire calendar year. And here's why, right? Look, we just look, look back on the last four months, right? You got the November holidays roll right into Christmas. Football starts to get real good in January. And then obviously we just capped off another NFL season with a, you know, what a, a, a pretty damn good Super Bowl 58 between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. And I'll get into that in a second. I'll give you my thoughts on the Super Bowl. But like now what? Right. Because like there's really nothing to be said about the next six weeks weeks until really, you know, March where spring training starts to kick into a, a higher gear. Yeah. Happy pitchers and catchers. But yeah, like at the end of the day, like, what are we doing? Watching people throw and catch like, come on, man. But you know, it is exciting that baseball season is upon us, but we got a long five, six weeks ahead of us. We got to continue to weather the cold. I'm sure we'll get hit with another snowstorm and that's okay right? These kids need the snow. They need to get out, do some sledding. But we go from partying our goddamn asses off through November, December, January. And really like the Super Bowl, the way I see it, the Super Bowl is almost like this one last final hurrah until St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. So again, there's a good five straight weeks of just like, ah, and I got to be honest with you, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with the NBA product, right? Like I watched the Sixers game last night against the Miami Heat. And it was a close game. And what I noticed was that these guys, these paid professionals making millions and millions of dollars do not know how to box out. Like the most fundamental thing you can do in a basketball game is when that ball goes up, have some court awareness, knows who's coming in hot, and lay your goddamn ass on somebody. But, like, no way. No way. You mean to tell me I have to body up with that guy who's coming flying in for an offensive rebound that's only going to put these guys up five instead of three? Like, they had four golden opportunities to turn that game into their favor, and they refused. The 76ers refused to box out. And that just frustrates me, man. And, and, you know, it's funny. Like, I had an opportunity last week to go down to uh, the Wells Fargo to catch a hockey game. My second Flyers game. I can't, re I can't remember the last time that I actually went down to the Wells Fargo and caught two NHL hockey games in one year. But 
I'll be honest with you, man. This team is really fun to watch. Like there is a little bit more of an exciting atmosphere when you're watching the Flyers. And then, you know, granted, this thing, this you know, we sat down. I you know, shout out to Maniac Malloy. I met the uh, the guy that paints his fucking body, uh, the Dumpy dude, Rob. Really nice guy, you know. And we're down there with Matt Alba, little pet Bet Parks outing. Shout out to Bet Parks. And uh, you know, immediately we sit down. What's his face? Konecki throws throws his gloves down with this other dude, and they just fucking go at it and just you know start the night off with a nice little classic hockey ice hockey throwdown. And uh, that was that, right? So the the crowd was into it. A couple goals later, the Flyers take an early three nothing lead, and the and the atmosphere is completely electric. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, dude, you just can't get this. And forever and ever, I was an NBA guy, an NBA guy over the NHL guy. And I still am, right? If I had to rank all four teams, I'm probably Phillies, Eagles, Sixers, Flyers, and no particular like percentage. But, you know, the bulk of it is the Phillies and the Eagles. Uh, but that's either here or there, man. The NBA product to me is really starting to uh, become a, a tough, tough product to watch. And, and again, I have no idea what, where, where, where we're going with this, but you know, the, 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 what I mean by just the next five or six weeks is that like, you know, football is over. Baseball doesn't really kick into high gear and the NBA and the NHL is like really hard, hard to watch on TV. Now that said, we got the PGA and, uh, you know, like, let's look, let's look back on the PGA, right? Like leading up to the Super Bowl, and I want to talk about the Super Bowl, but can we talk a little bit about the, <laughs> the waste management golf tournament, the People's Open, or should we call it the Wasteoid Invitational? Like this shit, man, I, this, 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 this tournament is one of those tournaments that I really do look forward to watching. And unfortunately, anybody that traveled out there this year, shout out to Joey Mayo. I know he made the trip out there. The weather just did not cooperate. Like I think they had record lows, like 40, 50 degrees. And that just sucks, right? For the participant that has to go out there thinking that they're going to Phoenix, sunny Phoenix, Arizona to let loose and get after it. And uh, they're probably all scrambling for, you know, winter coats and hats and, and so forth and so on. And it was an absolute shit show from what I was told. Uh, they screwed up like 3,000 parking spots. They were letting fans in that didn't even have tickets. People that did have tickets weren't able to get in. Uh, apparently, they started cutting off uh, drink orders to the public. And the only way to get a drink is if you had a VIP pass. And it's, you know, at, at one point, the uh, the entire tournament was... Uh, suspended, and you know the guys that were sitting on 16, the 20,000 that were sitting on 16 didn't see these guys come around until like three o'clock in the afternoon. So, you know, with that said, it was an absolute shit show. But I will tell you, I had some serious action on this tournament, uh, and I'm not a huge gambler, Sambo Nation. But you know, being that it was Super Bowl Sunday, my ju my juices were flowing, and I needed some action. So I dumped 100 bucks into my Fanduel, right? Dumped 100 bucks in my Fanduel, and I kicked the day off with a flyer. On Charlie Hoffman, at the time he was plus one thousand. Oh no, no, one hundred plus one hundred. I went to go put the bet in, and it, and it went down the ninety to one. That said, at ninety to one, he was currently minus eleven and only three shots off the lead. And I'm thinking to myself, the Charlie Hoffman is a fan favorite. Now, granted, he's forty-seven years old. He's got a nailing back, but like he's a fan favorite. He always comes dressed to impress. He's like the poster child for the waste management. I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know what? Let's take a flyer on Charlie Hoffman, 90 to 1. What does he do on sixth, the third round? 16th hole birdie, 17th hole birdie, 18th hole birdie. Just like that, Charlie Hoffman is tied for the lead and quickly became a nine, from a 90, 90 to 1 shot right down to a 6 to 1 shot. So I'm looking at my chops, 10 bucks to win $900, and we're still five or six hours away from Super Bowl kickoff. So... I'm geeked up. I'm absolutely locked in. This guy makes an absolute unbelievable run and unfortunately loses in a uh, sudden death playoff to Nick Taller, a Canadian Nick Taller, who I believe has another uh, um, PGA Tour win. But this puppy went to three overtime holes. And unfortunately, Nick Taller was just innuendo. Birdie, 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 birdie. But the guy birdied the 18th hole four straight times. Uh, so well-deserved and just like that. Uh, my fan goes down to 90 bucks, right? So, you know, moving forward into the uh, into the Super Bowl, I was all about the Niners. I really was. And, you know, there were some videos out there. I feel like that, man, I think I feel like the Niners got screwed in a way. 
uh, so many different holding penalties that KC, uh, I, I felt, I felt like KC was holding the, the entire game and getting away with absolute murder. Like Nikki Bosa was beating his guy off the ball and they weren't calling it. They weren't calling it. So look, I'm not going to sit here and say it was fixed, but I was all in on the Niners. I was all in on Christian McCaffrey, uh, you know, shout out to Kyle Thompson, who, who, who was all bought in on Colin or on, uh, Christian McCaffrey. So I, I rode that. And, uh, unfortunately I did, I didn't come on top, but you know, one other, you know, Mickey mush story. And I'll leave you with this was, so we're in a block pool, right? You know, everybody's in a block pool and my numbers absolutely suck. Had no interest throughout the entire game until, until the missed extra point shifted everything in other people's directions. I'm sure there's a million people out there when that extra point was missed, but thinking to yourself, Holy shit, I got to check my numbers again. And that's exactly what I did. And sure enough, Sam Boner Mick had San Francisco two and Casey nine. And at the time it was 16, 16. So it would have been 17, 16. So it was 16, 16. I'm thinking to myself, man, four or five minutes to go in the game, four or five minutes to go in the game. Uh, you know, all I need is a quick field goal out of Casey. San Fran comes back, makes it 19, 19. Game goes in overtime. You never know. You never know. And like it could have fell my way. We could have been sitting on five G's. If Charlie Hoffman won, we could have been sitting on another G. I could have had a six thousand dollar day. But nope. Here I am, flat, broke, and busted. Doing another podcast for Sambo Nation, alive and well. Appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, you know, again, just to kind of reflect back again. Like I'm a big golfer right now, and I, I think that that tournament is so cool, and it, and it kind of resonates some uh, interesting you know, observations just around golf in general, right? So my question to you, Sambo Nation, uh, from a PGA Tour standpoint, why does the crowd have to be quiet? Like, for example, Bryce Harper steps up to the plate and has to face a 95-mile-an-hour fastball with 45,000 people screaming down his neck. But Tiger, Wood, Tiger Woods approaches a tee box and has to, or, 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 or is able to take a 185 yard shot where you could hear a pin drop. And if there is a little bit of a click or a little bit of a chatter, they're sitting over there bitching and complaining like, well, you guys have some respect. Like, you know what? Like I'm a golfer, right? So I do like, I understand that. Like having a little bit of peace of mind, just knowing that everything is calm, cool. And like, there's no heckling going on, but like, I don't really care at the end of the day. Like, the golf that I play, usually there's a radio blaring and people are cracking beer cans and everybody's just having a good time. And like, you can't let that get to you. But from a professional athlete standpoint, I do understand it. There is that etiquette, right? There's that etiquette from a golfer standpoint, but like, it really is interesting. Like why golf, uh, you, you why golfers need that, that quietness as they approach the ball and make that shot. But football players and baseball players, or even like basketball players. Like think about the guy that's going to the foul line to shoot two under like the, 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 the biggest amount of pressure and has to go up to the line. And there's people behind there going bah, 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 like with the bam, bam sticks. Like, <laughs> like, could you imagine? Right. So that's a lot of pressure, right? You know, and I'm not sitting here saying that the golf world should be like, you know, uh, take a page out of happy Gilmore, but there is something to be said about that. Like why, why do golfers need silence to play golf and every other athlete, whether it be trying to hit a home run or shoot a foul shot, have to embrace that under a ton of pressure and noise. Like, Why is that? So I don't know. I bring up all this shit that we just like text about and talk about, and I'm, I'm hopeful that it's relatable to uh, anybody out there listening, but, uh, yeah, it's either here or there. Again, these are the these are the the five or six weeks that I struggle with, and uh, you know we just got to keep grinding, we got to keep pushing through, and uh, you know before you know it, we will be clanging them and banging them. Uh, opening day, Philadelphia Phillies, March thirtieth, and then you have opening night. I believe is April first. Don't hold me to that. I don't have the dates in front of me, but if opening night was tonight. Your starting lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies would look like this. Batting first, number 12, Kyle Schwarber. Batting second, shortstop, number 20. No, nope, what's his number? Ah, fuck. What's his number? Seven, Trey Turner. Batting third, 
Bryce Harper batting fourth, Nick Castellanos batting fifth, Alec Bohm batting sixth, Bryson Stott batting seventh, JT Real Muto batting eight, Brandon Marsh and batting nine, Johan Rojas. Like I got to tell you, like on paper, I think I just felt like I was uh, the like announcing uh, horses at the uh, casino at the Bet Parks horse track. That would be an unbelievable job to bet horses, bet ponies, and down the stretch they come. Uh, I won't get into it anymore. Jesus Christ, this episode stinks. Um, whew, I'll tell you what, that lineup on paper looks good. But like, here's the deal. Here's the one thing that like sticks out at me. Kyle Schwarber, leadoff, right? And I know we got away with it last year. And we made a run, but it was always a bone of contention for me. Like, I don't think this guy suits the leadoff position. I really don't. Like, I would much rather see Bryson Stott lead off and move Kyle Schwarber down to the six hole. And again, this is obviously going to change. But if this is your go-to opening day lineup, I got to question it a little bit. But overall, it's very, very strong. You got Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, Ranger Suarez, Walker, Sanchez, and maybe Lorenzen top off your starting rotation. Got to love it. Petchers and catchers reporting to you live in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, let's take a, just a quick break out to give a shout out to our good friends at Not For Long Media, the production behind the Sam Boner Show. Uh, big shout out to our good friends at the Original Fudge Kitchen. Proud sponsor of the Sam Boner Show and Not For Long Media. Shipping fudge, vanilla chocolate, peanut butter. In no good time, we will be down the shore munching on some fudge and some salt saltwater taffy. Salt water taffies. Another quick shout out to our good friends at Hank Sauce. Uh, appreciate all the love and support over the holidays. We'll keep pushing that. Uh, appreciate you know people getting online, HankSauce.com, and using the product code Sambone to support Sambone Nation. More to come there. More product affiliates to come here in the new year. Uh, again. Sam Boner Mix just in one of those crazy ruts. And I'll be honest with you, man. The, 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 the flu season has got the McKenzie household by the goddamn balls, man. Like, I, I, we've been sick for, like, the last 14 days. Got my son got it, and I got it, and a couple, my daughter's got it, and my wife got it, and I got it again. Now my son has it again. Like, I don't, I don't think my three kids combined have been into school together in the last two weeks. And now everybody's testing positive for strep and it's just like it's unbelievable man so you know what i'm just gonna go out there and get myself a good antibiotic and hopefully in a couple of weeks from now we are all healthy and at the end of the day i i really firmly believe like it's tough man these are the gray months right like we need sunshine we need that vitamin d we need that ocean we need that salt air oh my god i'd give everything to just go down and jump in the ocean but I'm not a big fan of the polar bear, polar bear plunge. And that's what's this weekend. I don't think anybody sponsors the polar bear plunge anymore, but anybody going down to Seattle this weekend to do the polar bear plunge, you know, good as to you. I've done it twice. I really did. I did the polar bear plunge twice and I just, I don't know, like for who, for what, like, it's just, it, it just doesn't, I don't know, man. It's a shock. Uh, and I guess if you're, you're doing it for a good cause, that's one thing, but if you're just doing it for the hell of it, like, oh, geez, holy moly, holy moly. What else we got going on here? A little off season action. Jason Kelsey, is Jason Kelsey going to retire Sambo nation? I firmly believe that he will. And I, I respect the fact that he has kind of held off, right? Like he, you know, him and his brother are doing unbelievable things in the media space. The new heights podcast is obviously, obviously taking over the world. And, um, you know, the fact that his brother was still alive and well in the super bowl, like, why, you know, you know, just kind of like leave it alone. Right. Maybe there's a lot of negotiation. Maybe there's some just like off season conversations that, you know, Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman are having like, you know, if he stays, he stays, if he doesn't, you know, Kudos to you, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable season. Like I said before, you'll have a statue hanging out of Lincoln Financial Field in no time. Uh, Hasin Reddick also looks to be uh, exploring some trade opportunities. That said, I don't think the Eagles want to get rid of him. I think that he just is in a situation where, like, you know, go shop your value, man. Get your agent involved, and then, like, whatever you find, bring it back to us, and we'll figure out a plan to you know, hopefully keep you on board. I mean, the guy's born and raised in Philadelphia. Have you ever heard – of somebody that was born and raised in Philadelphia playing for their hometown favorite team growing up as a kid, wanting to leave and go play somewhere else. So like, you know, I'll tell you what, man, Philadelphia Phillies fans are sick in the head or like Philadelphia sports fans. I should say are sick in the head. They're always assuming the worst. And I probably can get caught in that as well. 
but like some things in life just like don't make sense. Like why would you want to go play for another team? If you grew up here in Philadelphia as a Philadelphia Eagles fan, that doesn't add up. That doesn't add up at all. Um, all right. What else do we got here? Damn, I'm all over the place today. I really am. I am all over the map. It's cutlet month. I'm not feeling the cutlets. I'll, I'll try to get a couple more in me. I really will. Um, where do we just go? Where did we just go? Oh man, we went to Dominic's Tavern. We went to the Bank Bar. That place is fucking awesome. If you ever out in the Gloucester City, uh, New Jersey area, check out the Bank Bar. They just these two dudes just took this place over, put a nice clean slab in. Um, it was like, it's kind of like a Harry's tap room, right? The, like the old bank in Ambler, Harry turned that into a cool little bar where well, this guy did the same thing in Gloucester city, New Jersey. It was at first a church, then it was a bank. And now it's a bar church bank bar. <laughs> Why not? Why not Sambo nation? All right. So what do we got here? 97 days, 97 days till Memorial Day weekend. We'll be Sam Bone in the shore. Golf season is in high gear. Riviera this week. Tiger Tiger Woods, y'all. Tiger Tiger Woods. Like, all right. Who out there saw the Tiger Woods Sunday red logo? Or should I say, who out there saw the new Tiger Woods Sunday? Wait, what is it again? Let's start this again. Who out there saw the new Tiger Woods logo? And if you did see it, what is it, right? What is your first take at this logo? And, uh, you know, a couple people out there said if you turn it upside down, it's uh, basically a golf course. It's 18 holes. Some other people said it's a you know what. Um, but what is, what is it? What is that logo? Is it a tattoo? Like, honestly, it's a tiger? I don't know, man. That is a weird, weird logo. But, uh. Anyway, that's either here or there. Tigers out there still trucking. Sam Boner Nation still out there trucking. It's just, uh, it's just, you know, it's just an awesome, awesome time to uh, live in Pennsylvania and just continue to, you know, weather these storms and weather these illnesses. Flu season doesn't get any better. It really doesn't. Um, and I, sh you know, I wish I wrote some more stuff down. I really did. I, 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 I can't continue to do this by myself. I really can't. It's a lot of work. Um, but tune in next week. We're going to be bringing on, you know, Danny from Angelo's and, uh, the son of the Knicks, Joey, the Nick is going to be joining the Sam Boner show. We're going to go down to Angelo's and do that live from his loft. Uh, should be a ton of fun chopping it up, getting, a, uh, getting some good stories out of just, you know, two iconic legendary sandwich, uh, culinary experts, if you will. And I, I just brought, I just kind of made that up, right? Sandwich culinary experts, but it's true. It's true, right? We live in a beautiful hood. Uh, the Sam Boner hood, the uh, sandwich capital of the world. And I'm going to be sitting down with two of the most iconic sandwich culinary experts <laughs> in all the Sam Boner hood. But man, I could be more excited to just get some good fun stories out of those guys. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, just scrolling through some things that I had wrote down, but I pretty much covered it all, right? Again, this is just one of those, ah, oh God, times of the year, right? These next six weeks, we have to grind out. And then hopefully the spring will come. The weather will get a little warmer. We'll start golfing a little bit more. Maybe throw in some golf content here in 2024. But until next time, I'm going to keep on sand bone and hope you keep on sand bone and too. Appreciate all love and support. Sam Boner out. Pop that Sam Boner and baby it's on.